Hello, welcome to this section of Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to continue working problems with RC natural response circuits. So here we have a little bit more complicated problem. Again, we'll have part A, B, and C to kind of pull as much practice as we can out of it. Basically, in this case, we have a 100 volt voltage source and we have 10 kilo ohm resistor, 32 kilo ohm resistor, 240 kilo ohm resistor, and a 60 kilo ohm resistor. And everything that I have labeled in red, this is all stuff given to you in the problem statement. So everything that you see here is exactly how you would see it in a textbook or test question. And part A says find VC of T for t time greater than zero. So when the switch moves, that happens at zero. As soon as the switch moves, then basically we've disconnected this initial part of the circuit. And so after the switch moves, we're only really left with all this stuff the capacitor will start discharging through this resistor network and so we're trying to find out what's the voltage across this capacitor as a function of time. We expect it to be an exponential decay of some sort because RC circuits always decay exponentially. But the, the, the devil's in the details, so to speak. So in order to find this, there's really two um, things you need to know. The first one is, what is the initial value across this capacitor right before the switch moves? Uh, and that's what we're going to focus on first. So when the switch is in position A right here, in that case, none of this stuff on the right-hand side of the circuit is even connected. All we have is a 100-volt source, a 10 kilo ohm resistor, and a capacitor. Let me ask you a question. What is the voltage across this capacitor in the initial state? And you should be able to answer that even without doing any calculations. The voltage across this capacitor initially, before the switch moves, is going to be 100 volts. And you should be able to see and understand that just from the drawing, but let me make sure you do. If you hook this up and you just sort of connect it, what's going to happen is current is going to start flowing out of the source. It's going to start charging up this capacitor. But eventually, after a long period of time, this capacitor is going to start to look like an open circuit because it's only going to be able to charge so much beyond which the plates in there just, they just can't continue to accept charge anymore. So the charging process will happen, but then everything's going to stop. The thing's going to be fully charged. When the thing is fully charged, there's no more current flowing anywhere in this loop. I mean, it looks like it's a big loop here, but since this is a capacitor, eventually it's going to be an open circuit here. And when it becomes an open circuit after it's charged, there's no current flowing through this 10 kilo ohm resistor at all. There's no current circulating at all at that point after the capacitor is charged. So because of that, since there's no current flowing through here, there's no voltage drop across this resistor after the capacitor is charged. And so if there's no current through here, then there's no voltage drop across this guy. And if there's no voltage drop across here, then that means the voltage of the source has to be uh, displaying itself or presenting itself across the capacitor because the Kirchhoff voltage loop has always got to be true. So that's how you analyze these things. You look before the switch is closed or moved and afterwards. In this case, before, we can tell by looking at it that there's going to be a charging process Eventually, this will be an open circuit, current flow will stop, and this voltage is going to basically be across these terminals uh, down here. If you don't believe me, then just pretend there's zero volts across here and do a Kirchhoff voltage loop across these elements. The entire voltage drop is going to be across there. So that's how we know V-naught is 100 volts. Actually, let me, uh, yeah, V-naught. So V-naught, I'm calling it to be the initial value um, right before the switch moves. So that's the first thing we need to know. The second thing is what is the time constant of the circuit after the switch moves? So when the switch moves here, then you can ignore all of this stuff. And you have a capacitor, which is a known value, and you have no